Hello, this is Mark at Titus. Um, haven't made a video in quite a long time and I'm not going to turn the camera around today because as you can see my balancer is filthy dirty and I'm probably as filthy dirty as my balancer because my crankshaft here uh, and I had spent quite a bit of time together and I've been doing a lot of grinding on this. So anyhow, I thought I would make a short video here of what goes into making a Titus engine. Uh, I've seen pictures of our blocks, but uh, we do actually build the engines as well. Um, but anyhow, this is a crankshaft that's going to go into a, a high RPM uh, small block Titus. This one's going to be 434 inches. This is a 4 inch crank. Uh, this is an aluminum rod, naturally aspirated engine. And uh, at this point, the crankshaft has already been put in the block. It's been mocked up. Uh, we made sure that everything uh, was clearanced. Uh, we machined this particular crankshaft. We machined the counterweights down so they can internally balance without putting a lot of mallory in it. And as you can see, this particular crankshaft has no mallory in it. Um, nothing on either end, no mallory. And this one is an internal balance crankshaft. Um, like I said, this is, is a aluminum rod, kind of a high RPM deal. Uh, this is a GRP rod. This uh, particular rod is um, built to, they build it to what measurements we give them. This is not the longest rod we could put in this combination. It's not the shortest rod we could put in this combination. It's just what we feel to be the right rod for this combination. Um, but anyhow, after the uh, pistons are, are machined. Uh, we machine, did some more machining on these pistons once we got the pistons because uh, we had to order the cylinder heads before, or uh, excuse me, we had to order the pistons before the cylinder heads arrived. I normally like to have the cylinder head in my hand when I'm ordering a piston, but um, anyhow, we did some machining on these, um, shaped the domes a little bit different to make sure they cleared. Um, the combustion chamber got everything, all our clearances right, our quench distance where we want the quench pad area to be and got that uh, correct. So now we're at the point of balancing it and um, I've been working on this for several hours. Uh, as you notice, there's places where all around this crankshaft, you can see where I have taken little bits of metal here or there. Um, as you notice, we do have a big, uh, drill press on our balancer, but you don't see any holes drilled in this crankshaft. And that is because I don't like drilling holes in crankshafts that are going to see a lot of RPM uh, when you can shape the counterweight to do the job correctly. And I've been shaping on this all day long and I've gotten it to a point where I've got it shaped. Um, and you can see also that things aren't just ground on the ends where crankshafts are normally uh, done the balancing on and you see usually holes and everything drilled here. We've also uh, been shaping the counterweights here and there and that is because a crankshaft is usually balanced just on the ends. That's where your correction is done. I'm really not a big fan of doing all the correction just on the ends because then to me it sort of acts like a set of bicycle pedals. It, it wants to do this in the engine. The engine has four different throws. It doesn't really make uh, a lot of sense to me to do just balancing on just the ends. You have to balance the center of the crankshaft as well. Now throughout the balancing, sometimes you have to chase and move material in different places around the crankshaft because the balancing will, you'll end up chasing the weight and it doesn't always stay right in one place. You move it, you take some off here and sometimes the heavy will go back and you'll have to go back on the other side and start chasing the weight back to get them to where you want them. And the reason that you want to get the weights where you want them is you don't want to have all the heavy spot when you're done on one end and the heavy spot on the other end in the same place because then the crankshaft is going to try to uh, make an eccentric motion. It's basically going to try to make itself go out of the engine. So you want whatever imbalance you have left here and whatever imbalance you have left on the other end to kind of counteract themselves. So anyhow, um, I've just got this crankshaft wiped down. I wiped all the dust off of it. Um, I got it really close. Um, you have to wipe the dust off of it because, believe it or not, the dust from grinding on the crankshaft 
can actually be read by the balancer. And if you don't get all the dust off the crankshaft, it affects the way that you end up balanced. And then when you go to wash your crankshaft, uh, you end up with a slightly imbalanced crankshaft. So we'll turn this on and get the crankshaft spinning. And let's see how the final deal here worked out after I wiped the dust off of it. And I had to do about a gram worth of correction on it. And we'll see how it goes. Okay, crankshaft is balanced. And that is what the results are. So as you can see on the left side of the engine, we're four tenths of a gram out. On the right side of the engine, we're also four tenths of a gram out. Now the angle button or the angles that you see as I turn the crankshaft, when I'm, when I'm turning the crankshaft here, you'll see that number change down at the bottom, the angle. And what the angle is, is where I should be removing or taking off weight. Now if I turn the crankshaft one full turn, there's 60 of those angles. In other words, it's divided up uh, into increments of degrees. Now what you really want to see is you want to see this number, 20, and you want to see this number, 51, roughly be about 30 apart because then that means they're on either side of the crankshaft. Because if a whole crankshaft revolution is 60, half a revolution is going to be 30, and half of, uh, with their 30 apart, that means they're opposing each other, which means they try to balance themselves out. So anyhow, this is all what's done after the fact. Like I said before, this is what we've done to begin with to get the, uh, the bob weight. That's what's on the crankshaft that uh, simulates what the weight of the pistons and the rods and everything do to the crankshaft. So once everything was mocked up, everything is cleaned, measured. Um, those are the numbers we come up with. Uh, that bob weight there, that 1568.8, that is actually what this particular guy on the crankshaft weighs. That's 1,568 grams that's spinning on the crankshaft. Now, if I were to take those off and try to spin the crankshaft, I would probably want to run because the crankshaft's going to try to chase me across the room. But anyhow, this is just a little bit of what goes into building a, a Titus engine or any engine that we build here. Um, this is just one of the uh, things that we do as far as the way we balance a crankshaft. Uh, as I said, I don't, I don't really like drilling big holes in the end of the crankshaft because to me, it sort of acts like a paddle wheel. And um, guys spend a lot of money on windage tray and oil pans and things like that to reduce windage. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to me to add it back in. So if, uh, hope you find this video a little bit of informative and at least show you some of the stuff that we do. As I build this engine, we'll go ahead and add some more video on here and maybe we'll talk about connecting rods and pistons and camshafts and things that we do and also the things that we've incorporated into Titus blocks that make them a little bit different than uh, other stuff that's out on the market. And not that that stuff is bad, it's just ours is a little different. Uh, we choose to do it, uh, things for a reason and anyhow, this is just what we do. This is the experience of what we see that works. So hopefully we'll chat again in a little bit when we uh, start assembling the engine. Thanks.